Hey, Coach John Tillman, along with Curtis Corley, Jared Bernhardt. Uh, Coach, we'll start us off with a statement and um, we'll this question. Um, obviously, uh, very proud of our guys. Um, you know, to get a, a conference win on a short week um, certainly wasn't a work of art, um, but uh, the effort was awesome. I thought the guys really battled. Um, certainly, a lot to work on, um, but uh, much that we can build upon and, and grow from uh, going forward. Question, Coach. Uh, you guys had a, a forty-two to twenty-four advantage in the ground ball today. Obviously, a lot of that be attributed to the face-off success, but can you talk about the importance of that, particularly against a team like Michigan that employs a 10-man ride so you can get a lot of open opportunities all over the field? Yeah, and you know, they, they've had a number of injuries at the face-off X, so um, they've, they've kind of gone to a strategy where they, they kind of almost can see trying to win the initial face-off. It's more, all right, we'll have a defenseman out there and chase your guy and see if we can kind of create another loose ball and then see if we can get that. So. They'll, the numbers will be skewed for them most of the time just because they'll, they'll basically let your face-off guy get it. And a lot of times, you know, your face-off guy isn't as strong a stick handler as maybe, you know, when you're offensive players. Um, and they do a good job. I think uh, Finn Gunin, who's been doing the face-offs, is getting better and better at, you know, like as you pull it out, he's right behind that face-off guy checking him, lifting him, and all that. And then if you do get it and you can't go upfield, you'll go back, and then they're pretty much – just bumping into that 10 man. Um, and, and I didn't do a very good job with our guys today, um, certainly getting them prepared in, in a lot of different areas. And, and that's on me, and that's something I got to do a better job of, whether it's 10 man and some of the things that we did. So uh, I'm really proud that their guys did such a good job with their effort, um, and that really kind of made the difference. Turp Talk welcomes nonprofit services as a new sponsor. NPS has the services to make your nonprofit shine. And on top of that, NPS is certified by Nano as a capacity building enterprise to drive your development further and faster. You can reach NPS at 877 797 8776 or on the web at npsbusiness.com. Nonprofit services, we make your nonprofit work. Thanks for being a sponsor of Terp Talk. Coach, what does senior day mean for you? I saw you out there hugging everybody at the end of the line. Talk a little bit about this class and your feelings on that. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it never gets any easier. Um, you get choked up. Um, you There are moments in your mind that flash very quickly. Um, just all of the things that these guys mean. You know, the seniors are, are always so important to us. Um, you spend so much time with them. Um, that they are part of the family and part of, you know, obviously our family. Um, so you kind of see them coming out, but then you're looking back at whether it was freshman year or your recruitment of them and kind of looking at where they were and where they are, and you're so proud of them, um, and you're just so appreciative of all the things that they've done for the program. Uh, certainly, you know, Curtis um, has given so much for our program um, and is just – much like all the other seniors, everything that you could ask for in a student athlete, where he has great passion, he, he's, got, he's got great empathy, he's a great student, he's going to eventually go on to medical school, he's competitive, um, you know, he does community service, uh, he'd do anything for his teammates, so, and I know he's blushing, but like, that's what this thing's all about. Um, so when you have guys like that in your locker room, you know, you, you embrace every day and you realize like, Every day is one day less you get with them. So senior day stuff, you get emotional, but uh, you know it's a great tribute to these guys and what they mean to us. Curtis, how much does it mean of all those number 42s? It was Corley's corner before they walked out. You have a large contingent of fans. What's it mean to you to be here? And what is the Maryland way that the coach has taught you? I mean, the Maryland way, man, it's, you, you get established that right as you step on campus. You know, to see your guys try to pass it down to the freshmen, uh, you know, it's a great tradition that we have here, just being a hard-nosed guy. And you just kind of touch back onto, like, old sports. <laughs> I got my brothers always wearing, wearing the jerseys that they find off on the, on, uh, the Internet, up in the stands. You know, I got really uh, my uh, good fr uh, family friend that's always there for me. Uh, he, could, he, like, talks me through a lot of things, you know. I think I those guys up in the stands. I hear them all the time. They're yelling at me. <laughs> they're 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 great. I just love having them around. You know, my family's uh, family means a lot to me. Senior day, uh, you know, it's one of the last home games. We still got another one, but 
You know, I'm just looking forward to the rest of the season. You know, uh, coach says it a lot. Uh, you know, the train gets going, and when it finally stops, you just get kicked off. So, you know, just getting another day with the guys is just amazing. Uh, Coach, when Jared and uh, Logan are hot like they were today, carrying the load all kinds of things, what type of effect does that have on your secondary scores? Um, certainly, you know, I think, and Jared can speak to this, we really never go into it like, you know, these guys are going to get the bulk of, of, of the shots. We have so many just unselfish guys that will move and share the ball um, that, you know, each day it's a little, or each week it's a little bit different. Um, it certainly helps when, when those guys get going because they, once they start getting going, they'll draw more attention. Um, it should open up other things. Uh, but it also says that, you know, either they're making plays or, or their teammates are looking for them. And I think they probably would be the first to, to credit them for, for a lot of that success. Jared, you had five consecutive hat tricks over this little span here. Are you starting to feel more comfortable in the offense being able to find teammates and teammates setting you up, or has it just been like that all year and you're just starting to get going now? Yeah, um, I mean, definitely a lot more comfortable. Um, I think just really unique having all, all the guys out there that can kind of make a play, you know. I don't try to go out there and say, oh, I need to score, I need to make an assist. Um, I kind of just go out there and kind of let the game, you know, come to me. Um, and I think, you know, we have a lot of dynamic guys that, you know, are feeling a lot more comfortable. Joe, just uh, minute and 15 seconds of the first half, you and Logan scored four goals in that final minute. Can you talk about what was working so well offensively, specifically during that time? Yeah, um, I think we kind of just saw some openings um, and we were able to make plays. Um, you know, like I said, try not to, you know, force things, but, you know, we saw some openings and we were trying to, you know, just, you know, take advantage of that. Yeah. Coach, how big was that run going into the going into halftime? That I mean, that that definitely like I felt like we picked up some momentum. Um, a tough week this week, you know that that Sunday night game, you know a late Sunday night game, very physical game. Uh, our, our our numbers in terms of like distance and high intensity and all that, were, they were very 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 high, probably the highest we've had all year. So. It took our guys, I mean, some of our guys were still pretty gassed as of yesterday. So, you know, it's that at this time of year, that slippery slope, like you're trying to get them prepped up on each team and each team is very unique, the personnel, the schemes, um, how we're going to defend it, how we're going to attack it. Uh, certainly today with the 10 man, we played other 10 man teams, um, but like when you're going to get a heavy dose, you love more live reps and you love to like get it full speed. Because um, then you have to think that fast, and we just walked through some things, and it really showed. Like we just didn't make quick decisions, uh, we didn't get to spots, um, and you just you got to make some decisions on. You want more reps, and maybe your kids are more mentally, physically fatigued, or you know, or do you back off and hope that you know, hey, we've been through this a little bit. And I don't think I did a very good job with that, um, and that's something I just need to do a better job for our kids. When, Curtis, uh, when you're back there against that ride, you're trying to complete those 50-yard passes. How do you see the field? Are you used to that? And once you guys did figure it out, I guess Ray Hill got a goal. Out of, so everybody went crazy at that point. So yeah, it's always good to you know see some pole goals, especially you know when you get that assist. Uh, <coughs> first <period>. uh, <laughs> But uh, no, so we were working on it um, all week, as Coach said. We didn't get the, the live reps that you know I think that would have helped us. Um, but you, you know when when you face this team like we did today, they're very good at what they do. Um, they're very committed to it. They they buy out, they sell out all into their ten man ride. So we just got to know our looks and we we. Uh, we executed decently today, but I think we could have done a way better job. Um, so just going forward. Uh, Curtis, Brett McCarr had a pretty good game today, getting ground balls and playing more defensively. Is he starting to really find his niche on this team defensively? He's just a young freshman, but is he starting to get going a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I've talked about Brett multiple times. Uh, he's amazing. Uh, I love having him down there. He's a really good guy off the ball, good guy on the ball. He listens to you. He can. He talks you through things that he sees before you maybe you even see it. So he's just a really good addition that we have down there, and I'm just really grateful that we have. Coach, obviously the 10-man ride is very unique. So for you and your preaching of the players, how do you find that balance between encouraging the poles, sometimes to take the long shots and the long passes, or other times to dump it down and try and move up the field at a slower pace? Yeah, it's a slippery slope. Uh, you, you have to kind of factor in you're going to make some mistakes. And there's kind of give and take. 
So you're probably going to fail a few more, um, and we probably we definitely had too many. Um, but you also kind of have to think, all right, if we are aggressive and we're shooting, um, you know, we get some goals off it, you're going to get some potentially easy goals, and you're just going to give up some possessions. And I think that, that, that last run at the end of the second period, I think you got one off a 10-man. Um, so we had a couple <coughs> loose, loose kind of situations that were created from the 10-man, so I think we may have gotten three. Um, it just feels like, you know, like in the third quarter when we just didn't do a good job, I felt bad for our defensemen. Those guys were getting gassed. Uh, I felt like we played 12 minutes of defense there. And then and then on the other end, you have to play complementary lacrosse and be like, all right, we would love to score, but if we take a quick shot, those guys will never make it through the fourth. So it forces to back off a little bit, and sometimes you just have to do that. Maybe take the first 40 seconds of the possession and then get into your offense, which it handcuffs you a little bit, um, but it also, again, you have to give a little bit so these guys can catch your breath because um, they will wear down. And, and, and I think that Michigan offense, they have a, a good group of, of players there, um, very select, very skilled, um, and I, I think those guys, uh, their future is very bright. Jared, can you talk about what it means to wear the number one jersey now that you've had it for almost a whole season? Yeah, it's a tremendous honor. Um, just seeing all the guys before me and how they carry themselves, you know, on and off the field, um, it's just it's just a tremendous honor. Um, I didn't obviously come here be, to wear the number one, but um, you know, coach asked me, and I, I was you know wasn't really going to say no. Um, but it's just you know I've talked to those guys, you know, Joe Walters, um, Connor Kelly, Matt Rambo, and you know they just talk about just putting on that jersey every day and just coming out ready to play. What's your family think about? It? Gonna give you a hard time about it, or are they happy for you, or ride you on it? Uh, they haven't really, they haven't really talked about it that much. Um, uh, I wouldn't say we're the most talkative uh, <laughs> people, yeah. so but they haven't really said anything. Um, if, if I didn't have the number one, I would still try to play. As if I was wearing number 52, 53, 10, whatever number I was wearing, you know. Have one more guy. Good. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks.